Today's video has some graphic descriptions of an animal attack, so viewer discretion is advised. Working with animals has its own set of risks, and today I will be talking about Don Brancho in a time when uh, working with animals went very wrong. This is So Sad, Stories of Survival and Death, a series where I talk about people in horrific situations and how they either survived or died in that situation. So if that interests you, please like and subscribe and let's get into today's video. Don Brancha was born Don Therese Laverde on April 16, 1969 in Cedar Lake, Indiana to Marion and Charles Laverde. She was the youngest of six children and she was a huge animal lover and when she was about nine years old, her family went on vacation to SeaWorld and they saw the Shamu show and she knew right then that she wanted to be a well trainer when she grew up. She had a strong love of Christ and her fellow man. Uh, she was very compassionate and she tried to live life to its fullest. Dawn graduated from Andrian High School in Merrillville, Indiana in 1987. And then she attended the University of South Carolina and got degrees in psychology and animal behavior. Dawn worked with dolphins at Six Fogs Great Adventure in New Jersey for two years, and then she got the opportunity to start her dream career of working with orcas, and she got a job at SeaWorld Orlando in 1994 working with sea lions and otters. Shortly after arriving, Dawn met Scott Branchow, who was a SeaWorld water skier, and they hit it off really well, and then they were married in 1996 in Chicago and that same year she started working with the orcas. Don and Scott lived in St. Cloud, Florida and Don was a very active member of the St. Thomas Aquinas Church there in St. Cloud. She enjoyed Bible study and was working to aid an orphanage in Africa. She also volunteered at a local animal shelter and she had two chocolate labs and she would often foster stray chickens, ducks, small birds, rabbits, and she would just look after all these other animals. And she just really truly loved animals and wanted to take care of them and wanted to provide a better life for them. In 2006, she had been working with whales for a decade and she was a senior trainer, kind of the lead, and she was in charge of a two to three year revamp of the Shamu show. She was like the face of the company almost. All of the posters around town and, and everywhere featured her riding on the whales. And it was just, she was known as the whale trainer. And if you look up images of her, it's just filled with images of her with the whales. Because Dawn had been working with the orcas for, you know, 10 years, she was very aware of the dangers of working with the whales and the risks involved. And she didn't take that lightly. The trainers had to be in peak physical condition. So Dawn would run marathons, lift weights, just stay in the best shape possible because it was a, it took a lot of strength to work with these animals and to train them. Trainers worked really long hours and they were always around each other. And so it was very natural for them to become involved in each other's lives and get really close. And Don was a very outgoing person, so she was friends with many of them. And many of her coworkers would say that Don was their best friend. And she was even there for the birth of one of her coworkers' babies. Don was the first one to see this coworker friend as soon as she came out of the delivery room. And she was even referred to as this baby's aunt. She was just so close 
to many of her coworkers and just had this unconditional love for them and was very supportive of them. On February 24th, 2010, Dawn was performing a Dine with Shamu show and near the end of the show, a killer whale named Tillicum or Tilly would come out to perform. Tillicum was the largest male orca or the largest orca to ever be in captivity. He was 22 and a half feet long and weighed about 12,500 pounds. And Don and Tillicum were described as having a great relationship that was based on mutual love and trust. But just for more, I guess, understanding, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Tilkem. So he was captured off of Iceland in 1983 when he was about two years old. And then he was sent to Sealand of the Pacific in Victoria, British Columbia. And none of the trainers there did water work with the whales where the trainers were in the water with them. So he wasn't really exposed to that. And then in 1991, Tilikum and two other female wills were involved in the death of 21-year-old trainer Kelty Byrne. Tilikum was the main aggressor of the attack, and he was very possessive of things that were his. And so it took them two hours to retrieve her body from him. After this, Sealand closed and Tilikum was sold to SeaWorld and then he moved to SeaWorld Orlando in 1992. And given his past and the fact that he had never done water work with trainers, trainers were not allowed in the water with Tilikum. Um, it was just, given that he'd already killed someone, it was just kind of, eh, no, let's just be safe. And uh, so other whales would do water work, but Tilikum would just only come out to do the final performance where the trainer was outside the water and he would do a show on his own. In 1999, a man named Daniel Duke snuck into Tilcom's enclosure at night. Like, I'm not even sure how he got in, but he did and he wanted to play with Tilcom and his body was discovered the next morning, draped over Tilcom's back. And it took time and effort for them to get Daniel's body away from Tilikum. Again, he was very possessive, and they said that Tilikum seemed pissed when they took Daniel away from him. So back to the show on February 24th, 2010, uh, Don was performing with him, and he missed a cue. Um, he was asked to do a perimeter peck wave, which is where they raise their flipper and just kind of wave goodbye at the crowd. And she whistled to get him to come get his treat after he did that, but he just continued doing the peck wave. And so when he finally did come back, she just signaled, no, you didn't do what I asked. You're not getting a treat and let's move on. So after the show, most of the patrons had left, but a few families kind of stayed behind to just continue watching the whales, or they went down below to view from inside of the tank. And Dawn went over to do what they call a relationship session, where she would go out to a layout, which had was a little platform outside of the pool that had like about a foot of water to where they could just lay down and pet the whale and just give them some bonding time. It was a good way for them to stay connected and maintain that love and trust with the whales. So Don went over to do that. And there's a home video one family was recording that showed the end of the show. It shows Tilcom's missed cue and it shows Don going over and, and laying on the layout. Then it moves on to, it shows a couple other things at the end of the video and, and then it shuts off. But what isn't shown is right after it shut off, an attack happened. Tilikum grabbed Dawn 
and pulled her into the water with him. Dawn was growing her hair out to donate to Locks of Love, and so her hair was longer, and SeaWorld likes to blame it on the ponytail, saying that Tillicum wasn't desensitized to the ponytail. But some other witnesses say that she was pulled in by her arm or her shoulder. I think one said her waist. And so don't really know exactly how he pulled her in, but I don't really think that matters. It's just that he pulled her into the water with him. But in any case, the action was swift. Tilcom pulled Dawn into the water and she was released momentarily and she was screaming and yelling and calling for help. But Tilcom looped around and he came back and he struck her in the chest. And then he grabbed her and he drug her down into the water and thrashed her about and pulled her around and kept her underwater until she drowned. At least a dozen visitors saw this before they were ushered out. The other workers were throwing nets and food at Tillicum, trying to get him distracted and trying to pull his attention away from Dawn, but it just seemed all the attention made Tillicum cling on to Dawn more. They moved him from pool to pool until they got him into a medical pool, which was much smaller, and eventually they were able to pry Dawn away from Tillicum. It took them about 45 minutes to get her, and after they retrieved her, they tried to resuscitate her. But, you know, after 45 minutes of being submerged in water and violently thrashed about by a six-ton animal, it was kind of hopeless, but they did try. The autopsy report says that Dawn died from drowning and blunt force trauma. Her spinal cord was severed and she had uh, fractures to her jawbone, ribs, and cervical vertebra. And she had many cuts and bruises and broken bones all over her body. Her scalp was completely torn off and her left elbow and left knee were dislocated. Speculation that Tillicum had swallowed her left arm were prevalent, but SeaWorld claimed that they retrieved all of her body. And in the autopsy report, it mentions damage that was done to her left arm. And so I'm inclined to believe that all of her was retrieved. Immediately following the attack, just like they had with the other attacks, uh, trainers were not allowed in the water with any of the whales. And usually this was a temporary thing, but OSHA came in and made it a permanent stance. SeaWorld was cited for not providing enough protection for their trainers and their employees. And SeaWorld fought this with everything that they had. They tried to put all of the blame on Dawn. Like I said before, they blamed her ponytail, saying that the trainers hadn't desensitized the whales to her long hair and that he had grabbed her hair and pulled her in because he was interested in it. It was intriguing to him. And, and then it just snowballed from there. They also said that Don should have known that Tillicum was being non-compliant and that he wasn't in a safe place for her to do a relationship session. He wasn't in the mindset for that and that he could possibly be aggressive. Um, but if you see the video, it wasn't that he was non-compliant. I mean, I could totally understand that he was pissed that he didn't get a reward for doing what was asked for him just because he didn't hear the cue to come back, but he still did what he was supposed to do. There is footage of the attack from security cameras, but the family has fought making any of that public. And I understand that. And I think we should respect that. And in 2011, largely in response to this, Florida passed a statute which allowed for confidentiality of media obtained by public agencies that depicted the killing of a person. 
And then in 2013, the documentary Blackfish was released and it highlighted the attack and created more controversy over the ethics of keeping killer whales in captivity and breeding in captivity and using these animals for show. Don's family has largely stayed out of the controversy and they're saddened that her death is being used as a tool for an agenda. In 2016, SeaWorld announced the end of their breeding program, and the last orca to be born in captivity was born in 2017. Tilikum returned to performing on March 30th, 2011, so a little over a year later, and he died of bacterial pneumonia at SeaWorld in 2017. Don's family founded the Don Bran Chow Foundation in 2010, which supports projects and charities that Don was interested in, mainly in the Chicago area. Their website says the foundation is dedicated to improving the lives of children and animals in need, inspiring others to follow their dreams, and promoting the importance of community service. Every year, they host the Dream Big 5K Run, and they support many children's charities and animal shelters. And I'll link their site in the description so you can go check them out if you like. Dawn seemed like such an amazing, compassionate, loving person. And what happened to her is truly horrific. Some people may say she knew the risks and that, you know, she worked with animals. She knew what she was getting into and what could happen. And well, that's true. It doesn't make it any less terrifying or any less sad or horrific like i just just thinking about what she must have felt or what she must have been going through is just you know she gets in the water and is trying to get out as fast as she can but this animal can move much faster um, knowing that this animal has all the power in that moment and trying to get him to listen to you trying to get him to follow commands but he's not and he, because he knows he's got the power and trying desperately to breathe trying desperately to just get away and knowing the whole time that this animal just sees you as a toy and the pain she must have gone through you know not being able to breathe I mean, if you breathe in, you're breathing in water and that hurts, you know, constantly getting bashed, hit, um, thrashed about. It's a terrifying and agonizing situation. And I just wanted to talk about Dawn for who she was and what she went through because she was the victim and that's what my channel's about. So that's all I have for today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one.